Okay, before we jump into today's show, I've got an exciting opportunity to share with you. We know that stress is at an all-time high, right? We can't hide from it. We've got to learn to deal with it and do that better. And so what we've done is we've created the free stress less challenge, right? So we're going to share some very simple and practical ways that you can begin to mitigate and deal with stress immediately. Plus, when you sign up for the free challenge, you're going to be entered uh, into our monthly giveaway. uh, And we're giving away our immunity stack, which is three premium supplements from Peak Energy Nutrition. And we want to help you get your immunity ready for anything. And so to register, go to stressless.peakenergynutrition.com. That's stressless.peakenergynutrition.com to sign up and get entered into the free giveaway. Now to our show. Hey everyone, welcome to the Stewardship of You. This is a Peak Energy Nutrition podcast. I am your host, Greg Darley, and we spend a lot of time with leaders and experts trying to learn how can we better steward ourselves, right? We're talking about our energy, our health, our creativity, our motivation, all these things that we need to do our jobs because we've learned, right? It's difficult to do anything when you're low on energy, especially leading And so like we say every week, you owe it to those you lead and those you love to bring your best energy. And so as a thank you, uh, at peakenergynutrition.com, we're offering a 10% uh, code for all purchases. Um, Use the the code podcast, peakenergynutrition.com. These are premium supplements for busy leaders. And again, that code is podcast. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, I'm excited and honestly a little nervous about today's guest just because the the content is is very interesting, also very a little a little scary if I'm honest. Uh, Daniel Bond is an internationally recognized expert in EMF radiation, EMF shielding, and EMF related health issues, and he does a lot of focus on the exposure of mobile devices. Right, talking about our laptops, our you know our, our iPads, and tablets, cell phones, and things like that. Um, Daniel became concerned regarding the health impact of EMF radiation emissions and these kind of things after more than 30 years of engineering work in the telecommunications industry, right? Talking, I worked with AT&T and Bell Labs to to name a few. And so uh, this is going to be a great conversation. And so I'm really excited. Again, a little nervous. We'll see what happens. But hey, Daniel, welcome to the show. You don't have to be nervous. <laughs> well, well, thanks for welcoming me, Greg. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I, I just enjoy talking about these kinds of things. And I think people should be aware of their environments and their health. And so you are the manager. You're the architect of those health. So you own it. No one else does. So I look forward to our chat. Hey, well, before we kind of jump in, you know, to talk about cell phones and 5G and all that kind of stuff, I'd love for you to, to, to share just a little bit of your journey, right? And how you even, like, why, why are we even having this conversation? Like, what was your journey, you know, and path to, to getting here? I mean, you had a really long, sounds successful, you know, corporate career. And then all of a sudden you're, you know, expert in, in, in EMF and writing books and starting companies. And so, you know, I'd love to give us a little bit of a flyby. Well, um, when I was graduated from college, I, I went into the Bell system, uh, into Bell Labs, actually. And I started my, uh, my, uh, my, my work at, the, at that point. And I was writing standards uh, for, the, for the Bell systems, technology stuff. Uh, all the stuff around us, uh, the technologies have been around for a very long time. And so I evolved managing staff to do these kinds of things. I, I evolved um, the testing technologies to make sure they were compliant to the standards we were developing. So I had a large history, a long history of, of um, bringing these kinds of things to the marketplace so we would govern the technology within the, net, uh, the Bell system. Um, I, I became as I evolved into the management of these kind of technologies. And I ultimately, at the end of my career, I was 
actually an officer of of um, of these companies, one of these companies. So uh, I had a pretty rich career and a lot of stress, by the way, uh, <laughs> uh, lots of stress. As you, as you go on with these kinds of things, you know, seven o'clock in the morning sitting at a desk is not enough, <laughs> and that, which I typically did. I'd come in very, very early. And uh, the reason I did was because I had to get some work done before my day was lost to all the other things that I had to worry about. So that's where I started. Uh, and then I, re I retired actually. And um, my, my sons were visiting um, 10, 15, about 15, 16 years ago. And they had their laptops on their lap. They were doing work for, for um, uh, remotely. Uh, and three or four hours of a day, they were, had their laptops on their lap. My, my wife goes by and she says, that can't be good for you. My, you know, I want grandchildren. That can't be good for you. So somehow intuitively she thought that the technology that they had on their lap could be potentially dangerous to the male sperm. Well, I, I scoffed at it. I didn't believe that was actually true. I, I knew a lot about these technologies and I just didn't think there could be any danger whatsoever. But because I sort of a, 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 a research kind of guy, I, I sort of went into the medical side of the, of, of the industry. And I was sort of surprised when I found that after about three or four hours, 10 to 15 years ago, we already knew the male sperm was immobile or, or, or likely immobile after uh, three to four hours of use. So, wow, I, I, I stepped back a little bit and I said, wow, that's sort of surprising. Um, and... Um, I told everyone it was going to get scary. Look, we're, we're, we're just a few minutes into this and I'm already, I find myself kind of tensing up already. So sorry. Well, Greg, don't put it on for four hours and you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, uh, you know, after the research, I, I, because I was a mechanical engineer doing electrical engineering in the Bell system, I had a good sort of broad back background. And so I designed some technology that my sons could use to use in their laps. And, and uh, it prevented the emissions from those technologies passing through to the, uh, to the body. Um, and, and, and so I, I built some of these things for my son. They had friends who sort of wanted this kind of protection. And all of a sudden I was in the business of uh, creating technologies that shield the body from the technology we had around us. And so here I was, retired in my early 50s, uh, had gone up to 240 pounds uh, because I did not have the right time to do my exercising. I did not have the right time to eat balanced meals because I was always on the road. And, and, and so here I thought I'd be able to recover my health and, and do well, and all of a sudden I'm on another journey. That's somewhat the weakness of a type A personality. Um, and, and then... Um, that's where we began. We, we built about a thousand of these technologies. And, um, and, they, and I said, if, any, if, if we sell a thousand of these things, then I'll be in the business of going beyond that. Um, if we don't in one year, then we're not doing anything. So that was 15 years ago and we're a much larger company now offering so much stuff. So my, my idea of resting and eating properly and eating healthy, again, was at risk. Um, but, but unlike um, many years before, I began actually doing yoga. Um, wow, did I feel the difference when I actually took the time to spend that hour, which is a bit of meditation and a bit of physical work. And I found that really, really important. At the same time, I began uh, making sure that I ate as well as I could, organic meals. I didn't want pesticides in my product, uh, in the food I ate. And so I became more regimented as I got older and I kept on trying to exercise. So here I am trying to build a business and at the same time, I'm also trying to do a better job at my health. Yeah, you're trying to build two things. Um, right. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious because I, I, you know, I was reading, as I read through your book uh, recently, you know, getting ready for this and, um, yeah, just again, trying to learn more again, I've got, I've got young kids, you know, yep. and uh, you know, the, just all of that comes into play. But I th one of the things that kind of stood out, you, you're talking about, you know, one of the questions when you were, you know, st still working in the corporate world was, you know, just asking the question of like, wait a minute, like who's, 
who's asking the questions of wh what about the health potential consequences of these technologies, you know, and it, it just got, it was interesting. I was like, wow, that's an interesting question. It, like who's asking that, you know, and it, it, it almost feels like, you know, are we, are we 50 years ago and it's, you know, the tobacco industry or something like that, where it's like, Hey, who's, who's asking like, ah, you know, and, and it's just an interesting, an interesting deal. Are we going to, are we going to look back in 50 years and, you know, say, Hey, wow, EMF, you know, was the, was the tobacco of the, you know, the early 2000s. You know, uh, Greg, uh, it's a wonderful uh, conversation to look inside what was going underneath the covers of what we did. Um, I used to worry about all the performance of all the technologies to ensure that they met uh, the kind of um, standards we expected the technologies to meet. One of them was that we made sure that one technology wouldn't interfere with another technology. And so we actually did uh, laboratory work to make sure that that was true. Because we were very good engineers, we did a very good job of making sure other technology wouldn't be influenced. Ironic, we never worried about the person that mm -hmm. was using it. So as engineers, you know, we were pretty diligent in trying to do the right thing, but we were just simply unaware that there could be potential dangers like this that would creep into our lives from the technology we went around us. But in fact, that was true. And, and you mentioned cigarette smoking. Uh, uh, I'll show you an analogy which is very relevant to what's going on in telecommunications. Um, when I was 12 years old, which is a lot of years ago, uh, I, I, grew, I smoked cigarettes when I was 12 because I wanted to be a big man. You know, we were sampling cigarettes. And at, at that time, Research knew there was a direct link between uh, smoking a cigarette and lung cancer. And that's, you know, 50 years ago. And so um, that was known, but it wasn't common knowledge. We in general didn't know it because for whatever reason, what we knew on the research side was not flowing over to the um, to, to the ma mass market, to the people using the product and the, the consumers using the product. What, what's interesting about that is, believe it or not, that was part of my genesis of the book. I was so frustrated that there was so much facts about the issues that no one knew about. We actually, my son and myself, thought we need to bring this to the public. We need to describe there's a lot of study work, a lot of research that talks about the potential concerns we should have and how it's impacting the human body. While there are industry uh, drivers like the, uh, the smoke industry that were saying there was no problem. So there was a dichotomy set up which uh, was in conflict, yet the facts are pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so, I mean, it's one of those things when obviously, you know, I don't want to get, you know, it's not a political podcast, but you know, when, when money's at play, when there's money at play, there's obviously, there's going to be, you yeah. know, different narratives, but all right, well then let's dive in. Um, so let's, what is EMF radiation? Let's, let's, let's start there. Where does it come from? And then let's talk about again, practice. What's the big deal with it? Like, why should we care? So um, when you pick up a cell phone, you have a transmitter at that cell phone that's, that, that's transmitting, when it starts transmitting something, it's a signal that's a ball that keeps on opening up, opening up, opening up. It's an omnidirectional signal. It's going every which direction looking for a cell tower. These, these cell phones can actually go four or five miles. So there's enough power that's being generated out of your cell phone to get that far. When you use a laptop and you have a Wi-Fi signal going to a Wi-Fi, those things can go up to 500 feet. So there's a power, the energy that's being transmitted omnidirectionally is being not only transmitted towards the Wi-Fi, but it's also being transmitted towards your body. It's not being controlled in any way. And, and then uh, fast forward to today, we have so many of these devices around us. Um, we have more and more 
these transmitters in our environment. Even your cell phone, you have a, a Wi-Fi uh, transmitter on it, you have a Bluetooth transmitter on it, and you have a cell tower transmitter on it. You have three transmissions coming out of your device, your cell phone alone. And so that's sending out these, these uh, well, EMS stands for what? Electric, electronic or electro? Electromagnetic radiation. Okay. Yeah, that's, what's, that's what it is. And, um, and um, x-rays are electromagnetic radiation, but that's in the very high range. They call it the ionized range. Um, and this is the non-ionized range. When you, when you go to the dentist and they put a lead weight on top of your chest and they put something in your mouth and they take this uh, uh, scope, they put it right next to your ears and then they run into the other room, push a button and they look out and see if you're still there. That's, <laughs> that, that's because it's ionized radiation. It has the power to literally knock you out of, of, of the, uh, the, the electron out of the orbiting uh, neutron. So that's a lot of power. When you talk about electromagnetic radiation, the mechanics of breaking down the cell are different. Um, and, um, but, but not necessarily um, safe. The, the, over time, those could disrupt the cell just like the ionized radiation does, and you can mutate a cell that have uh, DNA damaged cells. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we spend a lot of time around here talking with leaders about really two things I'm passionate about. How do we increase energy as leaders for us? And then how do we reduce stress? You know, you kind of add those two things because they, they really work in tandem. Um, you know, high, I mean, you're talking about with your career, right? High stress seasons, like they just degrade your energy, right? You don't have the, uh, the ability to, to work at that high capacity that you want to for, for a long duration. So what, what does the EMF exposure you think play in that part? How does it, how does it affect stress? Uh, how, does it, how does it potentially, you know, hurt our energy? What does it look like for an individual? So when, when you are exposed to an environment where there's multiple transmissions, there's one or more, it is literally suppressing your immune to some extent. So talk about being more vulnerable to the environment you're around as a direct result of the suppression of immune. The, the other thing that, that um, that's related to that is when you are stressed, you, you actually put yourself into your cells into what they refer to as an oxidative stress. And that oxidative stress really does, oxidative stresses are where the cell, uh, there becomes an imbalance between the free radicals and the antioxidants. The, the free radicals carry the oxygen to the various parts of the body. So when you're in oxidative stress, your body is, again, not performing quite right. And as a result, there are many, many potential issues that could occur because of that oxidative stress. And by the way, I hate oxidative stress, the word oxidative stress, because it really doesn't describe the magnitude. It talks about the stress of a cell. We're talking about the stress of a body. Mm -hmm. You can't sleep at night and, and you're, you're wondering, why can't I sleep at night? When you have a cell phone right next to your head, at night, it's interfering with the creation of the melatonin. Uh, it's literally interfering with biological functions. So oxidative stress can, there can be no, neurological issues, psychological issues, tingling in your hands, eyes may hurt, you, you may feel dizzy, you, you, you may feel um, irritable, depressed. All of these kinds of things directly are linked in research to emissions that are from our other technologies around us. Hmm. So I just think about kind of the, the modern, especially the current work state, right? I yeah. mean, so many people oh, working yeah. from home, you know, I mean, homeschooling or, you know, yeah. kids, you know, working from home, uh, you know, having school and we've got multiple devices and again, just the stress of deadlines and the, obviously the newness and the uncertainty, like it just, it feels like that's just a perfect storm to really, you know, just 
again, not completely just one day just knock us out, but just that slow kind of degrade. And then you wake up six months, six years later, and you're like, Oh, you're, 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 you're nowhere near the, the capacity or the potential that you had, you know, it just feels like it's just kind of a death by paper cuts, you know, type of process, which again, as a leader and as someone that wants to accomplish a lot, that just scares me. Yeah. Well, well think, think of it this way. I, I mentioned the melatonin interference, right? If you have a laptop or, or tablet and you're sleeping at night, uh, reading it at night before you go to bed, now, there is a protein in the back of the eye, which is basically the switch that turns melatonin on and off. They call it the cryptochromes, the protein. And so when, when, you, when you're out in the light in the middle of the sun uh, and you're looking around, you don't fall asleep because that switch hasn't turned off uh, or, or, or on, depending on the circumstance. When you are looking at a, 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 a tablet at night, there's a blue uh, ray that's coming off a color, uh, which is visible electromagnetic radiation. Mm -hmm. And it's basically telling the cryptochrome, do not turn the switch on for the melatonin, just wait. So you go to bed at 11 o'clock, you can't go to sleep. Why? Because your melatonin now has to kick in. Well, all of a sudden you have this circadian rhythm you want to make sure in your health environment extraordinary important because of the mitochondrial buildup of the cells at night when you sleep because that's when they happen when you sleep you improve those body function by by recovering and you're preventing that cyclic nature of the body to perform properly because you're in, being interfered with with literally stuff around your environment within your sanctuary of the bedroom so it's serious in yeah. some cases. I had a, I was on a podcast and the really, really bright lady and I was telling her, it's a sanctuary. Don't put anything in your bedroom. Take those phones, put them out, and then uh, take those clocks, push them away a little bit, and you'll do better. And she was saying, oh, thank you for those tips. Thank you, thank you. She didn't believe a word I said. And, and so about a month later, I got a phone call from her. And she said, my husband and I are sleeping. She didn't realize it. And she was a practitioner. She didn't even realize that that little bit of influence was not good for her husband or her. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right. So let's talk about, so what are the sources of the EMF that you think, hey, the most concerning? You know, I mean, obviously, I mean, again, there's a lot of devices. I mean, and there's a lot of, I mean, even you're saying the cell phone has three different types of, of signals. Right. So, you know, what, what should we be most concerned with? The, 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 the primary ones are the laptop, the tablet, the cell phone, uh, the Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi has more power that's been transmitting. So you really want to be careful of where you are relative to that. But those are the primary sources that we have in our environment. And, um, and when you're at home, you, um, all of them will influence the body. I actually talk about it as uh, bees in the room. One, one bee uh, won't kill you a thousand will. So the, the more transmitters you have immediately around you, the more likely it's influencing with your body. Over 10 years or so, you're three times more likely to have illness and severe illnesses as a result of that exposure. Kids, you mentioned kids. That's sort of an important point. Um, when, I, when I was growing up, um, uh, I, I, I had a, a cell phone early on and um, I had nobody to call because none of my friends had a cell phone, right? Fast forward to today, your eight year old has a cell phone in her hand and she is calling her friends and she's constantly on that phone. So her exposure is more lifelong than mine was. So we have a, a, a people growing up that are starting very young with these kinds of exposures. And these exposures can be long lasting for long periods of time and have consequences that we really don't fully understand yet. Yeah. Um Let's talk about 5G for a minute, because that sure. obviously is, you know, you can't, you can't watch a, a football game without seeing a, 
exciting new technology coming and, you know, faster speeds, which again, I, the, the, um, the, the pessimist in me or the, or the, the jaded, uh, person says, yeah, that's just, that's, that's just people saying, Hey, guess what? You can now watch our ads faster. You know, we can put more, we can put more messaging in front of you and make more money. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of buzz about 5g. I mean, um, you know, Apple's new phones and Samsung, right. Hey, it's the promise of faster this and, you know, a better experience. And now you can, I mean, at, at what point do you need to watch a movie any faster? I don't get it. Cause it seems, they seem <laughs> to be playing pretty well right now, but so let's talk about, okay, what's, what's 5g just, just give a little explanation of that. And then hey, Greg, why, is I, it, why is it going to be more harmful? I, I, I agree with you, by the way. I can text anybody I want. I can see anybody, uh, any television show I want on my tablet, laptop, or whatever I use. And my cell phone's more than adequate to handle the voice calls I make. Yeah. So given that's the case, what is 5G? Um, 5G is the fifth generation or next generation of cell phone telecommunications technology. Um, with, with all the earlier versions from one to four, it literally was, you can make a phone call with one, and it was an analog signal. And now you have digital signals up to four, and you can have real-time streaming, you can have a bunch of stuff that we really didn't have in our lives. So to some extent, that evolution has been useful for us uh, in, uh, in a connection of the human, uh, to data and people. Um, 5G is that next generation. Uh, so almost everything you hear is hype. 5G that's in the public domain right now, everywhere around us, iPhone 12 included, are using 600 megahertz signals. That is an old radio wave uh, spectrum. It means it's been around a long time. Uh, it's uh, th those technologies that are being claimed to be 5G are 5G, but they're they're not the high end, high volume, high transmission high uh, 5G. It's all the mid range that they're doing. So a lot of the stuff you see today is by and large what you have been exposed to all along. So it's just again one more B in the room but it's similar. It's not the hornet anymore. It's not the killer bee. It's just a regular bee. Um, and so um, that's where 5G is. The issue uh, or the real concern, Greg, is that when they need to provide very high bandwidth with low latency for the broadband services to your house, they're not going to use a coaxial cable to do that. What they're going to do is have a, 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 a omnidirectional 20 to 90 gigahertz signal transmitted into your house. It roughly goes 750 feet. Uh, and so there's going to be a lot of them. And it's never been in the air ever before. And there's no study work that says it's good or bad. So that's the part of the 5G that's really the concern. It's the stuff that they call small cell site. It's, it's going to be used to transmit the last 750 feet to your home, basically being the cable replacement for what you use today. That's, that's basically what 5G is. So it seems like it's one of those where we don't really know, but based upon what we've seen in the past from, from the, the, the technologies that, that it's building upon, we know what those have the potential right. harm to do. So it just seems like it's kind of that next domino. Right. Um, and we just don't, we don't have enough information to say, Hey, you, know, you can't tell us it's not, you can't tell us there's not going to be harm. You right. know, at, at this right. point, you know, we don't quite know yet. So I got Greg, you. that's a very w good way of explaining it. It really, we simply do not know. Uh, and if anyone says, Oh, you're in danger. It's not based on any fact. At most, it's extrapolation from what we currently know. Yeah. And to some extent, that may be true, but it's certainly so premature to say it's that dangerous yeah. until we have the experience. So when it comes to just exposure, uh, I mean, I, we, you've hit a couple of the, 
in, in passing a little bit here, you, you, you've hit some of the, 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 the potential dangers, you know, what, what it can cause, right? So it can mess with our melatonin. So it messes with our sleep. And obviously if you've been, anyone's been listening to the stewardship of you podcast, you know, we talk about sleep, how important it is and what it does to the body. So you got sleep, you've got, you know, um, I mean, it can mess with different hormones, you know, what about, I mean, I was, um, you know, reading something from, from Dave Asprey recently about, uh, when he started paying attention to this was when he did a, I guess a bone scan and realized that in the pocket where he used to carry his cell phone, his, his bone density was about 10 or 12% less in that leg than the other leg. And that's where he always carried his cell phones. I was like, Whoa, that's a little scary again, as you age and get older. So any, what are any other, any other issues? What are some of the, you know, obviously, or the, I mean, we talked about, you know, the, the, the fertility issues and the family jewels for the men. Uh, you want to, you want to pay, pay attention to that. Anything else that's like, Hey, here's some other things that this could cause. Yeah. I'll talk about two things. I'll, I'll talk about the, the brain itself. And I'll also talk about um, the impact it's having on the population in general, as a general sense. Um, I'll start with the latter. Uh, electric hypersensitivity is a, a byproduct of exposure. When you get exposed, you may get these headaches automatically. You may get these body aches automatically. So there are these um, changes that are occurring in your body in response to that, uh, to that exposure. That's electromagnetic radiation hypersensitivity. That's over 20% of the population today. Um, and, it, and it's growing. Actually, some clinics think it's higher than that. And and eighty percent of that population are women. So we know that the uh, canary in the coal mine tends to be a female in the exposure, um, and so um, we know that's becoming more chronic illness that's occurring from these exposures, and that's the body is reacting in general with all these symptoms, one one or the other or more. And, and so that's a trend that's increasing. I, I mentioned the brain. The brain. You, you talk about, um, you can be walking and, and you would be in delta phase within the brain. There are phases that the brain goes through. You can be walking and your brain's asleep or you can be asleep and your brain is walking. It, it disrupts the the pattern of the brain, literally. I'm more worried about those kinds of things than I am the breakdown of a cell to become mutated or cancerous. There is evidence of that. Um, there is more and more statistical data showing there's clear evidence, but the populations are relatively small. What's not so small is a growing indication. When, when you go your kids to high school, they have a Wi-Fi in the classroom all day, seven hours a day. And they're ex being exposed to every transmitter in every laptop in that room. So that exposure has been correlated to uh, some of the uh, um, anger issues that are occurring with kids. That's on the rise. Um, and so I'm more concerned about the implications to these exposures to those kinds of problems, the anxiousness that is a result from these kind of exposures. So um, th those are the things that we know are uh, uh, more and more occurring. And we also know uh, will continue on probably a, a, a trending upward path. Yeah. So it sounds like there's a lot of, we, we haven't, I mean, there, we haven't, or maybe there's a few studies that, that show causation. There's definitely a lot of correlation yes. there, you know? And so, you know, the, the, the brave, the brain, sorry, I was, Braves, I was thinking uh, baseball was on my mind. <laughs> the, the, the wavelengths of the brain are, has been a fascinating. I, I, I dove into that a couple of years ago, looking at yeah. just the, you know, what the, the wavelengths. So when you want to focus versus be creative yeah. and sleep yeah. and all that. And so the, right. that, that is, Again, scary for me to think about, wow, okay, when I'm trying to sleep, you know, you got this signal or if I'm sitting here trying to, you know, trying to be engaged in a, in a conversation with you, what impact is that having? So there's, 
now you give me something else I've got to, uh, I got to start connecting those dots a little more and dive in more of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I said you need a sanctuary in a bedroom, I am not kidding. You should not have these cell phones in your bedroom because it's interrupting with those processes. Almost every electric hypersensitive person has a disrupted brain pattern. Uh, and so you can't see that. Uh, um, but, but you wake up and you're tired. That's because you didn't have you, a deep sleep. Dan, how do you, uh, how can, how does someone find out if they have that? Is there, is there, do you, is there are there tests for that or is that, yeah, is that actually, actually, there are actually, okay. there, there are ways of measuring the resistive path between parts of the brain. You're looking between in the front, the lobe, between two spaces, you know, that's where anxiety builds. Uh, and you can look at the conductivity in that space and you can actually detect if it's lower than it should be or not by, they call it WAVI. There's a, there's a equipment that does a test that. And then there are uh, exercises with various parts. I, I'm familiar with Dr. Porter. Uh, he has a brain tap and he actually has patterns of literally re redefining the brain through pattern and you can find literally changes in that uh, the resistive path within the frontal lobe. And that is an improvement because of the direct uh, uh, exposures to these emissions. So it's possible that if you uh, think that that's a problem, that you can find uh, testing equipment to do that in various clinics. And you can actually find ways of adjusting it through various uh, control uh, patterns uh, through technologies that Dr. Porter and others have. It's probably, it's probably cheaper and faster just to get everything out of the bedroom, like you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, that's exactly what I say. You don't have to do any of these things. If you are aware of your environment, you just have to be clean. Like you, you have a, a laptop in your office and you have a, a monitor to it. Do you have an Ethernet connection to it? Uh, you know, if, if you had an Ethernet connection to it, your Wi-Fi is not connecting to your laptop. You're go using a wire. Simple little things of managing your environment actually reduce the exposures to a great extent. Yeah, I thought that. So that's that's kind of my next question because I'd love to then. So we obviously there's a lot of potential harm, um, but there's this di there there. I guess there's a dichotomy there, or there's you know we got to hold these, these two things in balance of our world, you know, I mean, you know, unless you're moving to Pennsylvania, right. And you're going to, you know, banish all technology. Uh, we used to, my wife, and our family used to live up in Northern Virginia. So we'd go up to Amish country uh, for weekends. <laughs> uh, fascinating. I mean, just cool culture, uh, some really good food, but you know, you see, Hey, we're not there. You know, we're not, we're not 5g. They probably don't know what 5g is. Right. So, so there's this dichotomy of, in my world, I work on my cell phone. I create videos on my laptop. I, you know, record podcast, you know, across the internet. Right. I, I've got to use this technology, but right. also I care about my future and my energy and my sleep and my family. So, how do we protect ourselves and our families, you know, from this? But also, how do we continue to work that? So, I mean, I'm also thinking about. I got travel a lot for work. I know a lot of our listeners do, right? So we're on the road and thinking about being in an airplane or being in airports. I mean, how many, <laughs> how many cell phones are, are, you know, are you around when you're in an airport or, you know, the, the business center, hotels, those type of things. So what do we do practically? How, how do we mitigate that? But also we, we can't go to the dark ages. So what, what do we do? Um, we, we talked a little bit about, um, some of the things you can do by moving the technology away from you when you're not using it. A cell phone doesn't have to be in your pocket. A cell phone can be four foot away, five foot away, six foot away. That, at, 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 when you have a cell phone to your head, 100% uh, uh, of the danger is there. You take it one or two foot away, 80% is gone. By four foot, 98% simply by moving things remotely away from you as a course of practice, you, you will find you are minimizing the exposure. That's one of the things I always recommend. M keep your time on technology as low as you can. Don't spend hours on a cell phone without, if you do, make sure you have precautions. 
Um, and- like, so, so, I mean, sorry, let's just, I want to get practical there. So, uh, I mean, things like using a speakerphone or. Right, or what- right. Yes. Use a speakerphone. Uh, if if um, you, you, you don't want it so public, um, use a uh, wired uh, uh, ear, earplugs. Um, and um, that greatly reduces that exposure. Uh, so in general, look about around you, turn the transmitters off that you don't need. Uh, the ones you do, make sure that you put it away. And if you don't have shielding or anything protecting you when you're using it, try to keep it as low, a, a smaller duration of time as possible. Time and distance are your friend in a sense, if you're managing that stuff. Believe it or not, um, we're talking about the breakdown of a cell too. So all of a sudden, um, the stuff you eat that nourishes the body becomes pretty important, right? So uh, making sure you're eating the greens and making sure you're eating in healthy um, meals, actually, believe it or not, does change the, the, the susceptibility to these exposures. And, and so I always encourage people to have a, a good balanced diet. Um, um, and, and then of course, finally, what we spoke before, I can't say enough how important the sleep is at night. Um, there are so many things that recover at night that are disrupted be, because of these external influences amongst many others. Um, that you really can manage. And that's why I talk about the sanctuary of the bedroom. Make sure that you've mitigated all potential exposures. And you, believe it or not, just by moving out, you do feel the difference. So many people do. So these are simple things you can do um, that sort of allows you to stay in the uh, technology environment we live in. I'm not going to throw my cell phone away. Um, and none of us are. Uh, it was sort of part of ingrained in our lives. So we're not going to be throwing these things out the, the door, but we got to find ways of managing it in our lives. Yeah. Well, you know, I know you're not going to bring it up, so I'll, I'll bring it up. But I mean, you know, the talked about the beginning, you kind of skirted around it, but I mean, you started Defender Shield, you know, with, right. with, with your family. So, I mean, you guys actually make, you know, products that shield, you know, EMF. I mean, I, I have a cell phone sleeve because uh, I, you know, carry my phone with me when I travel and, you know, I use that, uh, often, um, you know, with my laptop, I've got the, um, the, the kind of heat, uh, an EMF kind of, uh, block and sleeve, you know, cause I, again, I'm, it's in my backpack a lot, uh, yeah. when I'm traveling, you know, when I'm, when I'm working remotely. So there's that, um, I know you, you guys also have some technology for, you know, pregnant, pregnant, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, women to, to shield and, and for kids, what, um, what about some of the other, cause I mean, it's one of those two where, you know, there's potential, I feel like I don't know how to phrase this question. There's potential when it comes to something like this of, you know, some things, you know, kind of a fear and hype also like, you know, sheep and wolves thing, right? So, you, you know, you, you pull up the internet and it's like, oh, well, here's the, the magic EMF pen, you know, and it'll block this and you've got the the special jewel that you wear around your neck. And there's, there's kind of some of that charlatan type stuff is like, Hey, what, like, I mean, you see stuff like EMF, you know, shielding stickers that you like, what, what about that kind of stuff? So, I mean, obviously you've got, you know, when you've got a thick laptop sleeve, that's got, you know, the, you know, like silver and stuff like that woven into it to really help diffuse and actually block the, but what about some of that other, to me, it seems kind of fringe type stuff. What's the deal with that kind of stuff? I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, uh, when we started, um, a, as you may recall, I ran the technical laboratories of the Bell system. I knew how to test to make sure that there was no emissions passing through the technology we used. But Greg, you don't know me. So what I did is I said, well, Greg's not going to believe me. Let me go to an FCC lab and have them test it. And they say what they think the device does. So it's independent and unbiased. So when you look at our reports, you can say, hey, I understand what they did. They're experts in it. And I feel comfortable now that what you say, what you claim is true. 
So I, I always encourage people, please uh, look for independent uh, evaluation of a product because as you point out, some talk about physics that doesn't exist. I have no idea what physics they're talking about. And I, you know, I studied physics for years, you know? So like, it's I like it came from, it came from a Marvel, a Marvel movie. It's like, here's <laughs> right. this special right. thing right. you hold and it absorbs all of the energy in the room. It's like, right. That, right. that's magic. That's not science. Right. It <laughs> is, yeah. Oh, you know, great story. You know, I was talking to a guy at a conference and he was telling me about grounding and I didn't know who he was. He happened to be the father of grounding. But I was the electrical engineer for the bell system. I, I sort of understood what I was talking about. And he started telling me the wonderful full things about grounding. I said, you don't understand grounding, if that's what you say. For example, if I put a cell phone to my head and I'm on a grounding pad, the frontal lobe is still going to be damaged and potentially cancerous in time, even though I'm grounded. So you can't argue that grounding is good in all cases. It's good for some cases, but not all. And, and so that, that's generally true. You, you really have to find what makes sense th and then have it reinforced by independent study. Most don't have it. Um, I would be more than willing to review anybody's product so long as I understand what the independent studies say. You talked about pregnant women. That bothered me a bunch because I don't know if you remember in the book, I talk about the potential for uh, endangering DNA damaged cells in the womb of a 12 year old child. And there, the, the distance between a cell phone and the, uh, the uh, cell of an egg is less than a foot. So if you have a young lady who has a, a 12 year old child that has a laptop, uh, a tablet, a cell phone in her back pocket, for her whole young, young, young uh, life, she actually may damage a mutated cell, kind of a mutated cell. And, and that egg can produce and when she marries and has children. I have a, a friend of mine who is probably the, the world, most world-renowned radiologist in the world. And he said, Dan, I don't believe what you're saying. I said, well, I'm just suggesting there's some research that shows these kinds of things can be true. And then he had a patient come in, a young lady, uh, had a child, only lasted a few hours when born. And there were mutations that existed that were so extreme that they couldn't pinpoint how it could ever happen. And there were two mutated cells, which meant what's the probability of that happening? And, and so just be careful. You don't have to believe the, 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 either side just want to be cautious about how you evolve with this technology and how you and put it into your lives. Yeah. Um, well, Dan, thanks so much for your passion. And uh, again, taking a chance, you know, years ago and right. uh, I, I love, I love the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, I love that. It's really cool. Where can, where can, where can listeners go to get more information about Defender Shield and, you know, get a copy of your book, Radiation Nation, if they want to dive in. Again, if you want to have nightmares, uh, but also <laughs> learn, uh, get real practical, Radiation Nation, it's a, it's a fascinating read. Where can they go to find out more information about all this? So if, if you go to the Defender Shield dot com that's the website that is uh, fronting our business uh, we we have various sections of the website we have a blog we 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 have refreshed almost every week and it's all about the most recent research and study work that's been available so you can get up-to-date information and co controversial or not what in the bl blog we have a learning section that talks about all the linkages or many of the linkages to uh, the d dangers that have occurred in, in laboratories. It also uh, it gives you an example. For example, there was a national toxicity program, which is the US government $25 million study that, that found statistically significant differences in mutated cells between the frontal lobe and, and the heart. And so we show all the facts as much as we can. Um, so I always suggest people just go there, just, just sort of understand what it is, and then you can make some choices. If, if you decide that it makes some sense 
to buy a shielding product, which takes that omnidirectional transmission and makes it directional. It doesn't allow it to go in a direction towards your body. That's all we're doing. We're not changing the pattern of the signal. We're not doing any of those things. We're just shielding the signal that's omnidirectional and stopping it from going in that direction. Um, we do that with laptops, for ta tablets, earphones. Uh, I'm really excited about the earphones we have because we eliminate all emissions that goes to the head with our earbuds. Um, and that to me was important because if you're electric hypersensitive, even the wires going to your headset is too much for some. And so we've eliminated that uh, the electrical signal to an acoustical signal. And we provide products that allow people to use cell phones when they're hypersensitive. Uh, so the, we have a, a, a pouch that for the women uh, to protect the, her, her womb when, when she's pregnant. Um, and we have blankets that are literally floating grounds. They don't ground to, the, to your electrical ground. They become a floating ground. And, and, and honestly, people really, if you're electric hypersensitive, you won't go anywhere without it because it, it shields you from your environment. So we have tried to expand our product lines for those, uh, for whatever uses that you may have for the technology around us today. That's great. That's great. So that's DefenderShield.com. Well, Dan, thanks so much uh, again for joining us. Uh, very informative. I hope uh, people will continue to dive in. Again, we're focused on how do we, what's going to impact our, our energy, our stress. And, you know, it, it's crazy to think is something that is, it just kind of seems, oh, it's not, not that big of a deal. It's, you know, it's kind of with me all the time. You know, things like my cell phone could actually, you know, be impacting that. So I appreciate you, um, taking some time and sharing that with us and uh, continued uh, blessings and success with, uh, with your endeavors. Greg, thanks so much. I, I really enjoyed our chat today. Um, give us a chance to talk about things people don't fully understand and maybe uh, this helped a little bit in furthering their understanding. So thanks again for inviting me. As always, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love it if you would share it with your friends. And if you really enjoyed it, leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever platform you're listening, that would be a huge help so that other leaders can find us and learn more about what we're learning about. And don't forget, you can get 10% off your entire order at peakenergynutrition.com with the code PODCAST, 10% off your entire order. And remember... You owe it to those that you lead and to those that you love to bring your best energy. We'll see you next time.